What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Rise of the Beasts Deluxe Class Mirage. Now, I've been really excited to get my hands on this guy for quite a few reasons. I mean, reason one would be that he looks awesome in some of the latest trailers and TV spots we've seen. And is it just me or are they kind of pushing this guy to maybe be the next big face for the live action movie universe? And reason two would have to be that he is the first Mirage figure that we're checking out over on the channel, despite him being so heavily marketed there on Unfortunately, haven't been too many figures for him. So let's check out the box art. You know, in terms of the CGI design, I do like the way it looks, but we have to talk about the elephant in the room, that being the face sculpt. So whether or not this is maybe a battle mask look that we'll see in the movie, I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I'm willing to bet that this was probably a very early concept design. And for whatever reason, they decided to change it last minute. So yeah, not looking too great. But as we turn him here to this side, we get another close up image with that very accurate looking plasma cannon, which I think was recently seen in one of the clips they showed and for the back of the box we have Mirage in both robot and vehicle mode Transformers Rise of the Beasts here at the top and the UPC and barcode at the base so this is one of the final movie line figures we have left to check out definitely excited to see whether or not we're going to round these off on a high note and here we have Mirage, just in case some of you guys forgot, also known as the Pete Davidson Transformer, which I never in a million years thought I'd be saying. But yeah, here is the movie line version. This is one of two deluxes which we'll be seeing for this character, the other version being the studio series release. But let's all be honest, it doesn't seem to be too impressive. You know, it seems very kibbly in terms of the robot mode. And undoubtedly, this does have a cleaner profile from the front in the sense that it doesn't have kibble hanging off the side of the hips nor the ankles. But what it does have is one massive ass back pack. I mean, damn, that is quite literally the entire hood, the side and the roof of the vehicle just hanging out on the back. And it's kind of shelf former like because the chest doesn't transform at all. It's very flat in design, really does remind me of the original Age of Extinction Galvatron that they brought out back in 2014. So maybe would have been nice had they engineered some of this into the transformation. But in terms of sculpt work, you know, I do think this guy looks pretty decent. We have to talk about the face sculpt, which I think is going to be inaccurate, unfortunately. But I am wondering if there'll maybe be a way to fuse the two figures. So Perhaps if we can pop the head off this and swap it with the SS version, that might leave us with the best version of this guy. I guess only time will tell. And I'm also not the biggest fan of these pieces we have hanging off the side of the shoulders. Now, there was a very simple fix for these had they just smacked in a hinge joint. So we could have taken the wheels, flipped them round to the back of the shoulders. I think that would have looked a thousand times better and not to mention a lot more accurate to the movie. And this side, for some reason, loves to pop off. So yeah, that's also kind of annoying. But in terms of sculpt, it does look decent. You know, we get some nice shocks smacked into the biceps, really nice detailing here for the forearms and the legs look so much nicer than some of those renders we saw for the Studio Series versions. I mean, check out the detail we have for the side of the hips and I do like the way the legs come together here at the base, but that does result in a few limitations as far as articulation goes. So yeah, definitely pros and cons to both figures it would seem. Now, in terms of articulation, he does have a really nice ball joint at the head so it can look up and down as well as tilt left to right. Due to the way he transforms, the shoulders do compress so it results in him having this hinge joint really annoying in terms of robot mode. I mean, I do definitely wish it could have locked into place, but there is a ball joint here at the shoulder, so it rotate the full 360, hinge out to the side, really nice bicep rotation, as well as a single joint at the elbow. Sadly, nothing at all in terms of the wrists besides the transformation hinge, which does just go kind of back and forth. And you'd think because he has so much junk in the trunk that he'd have no waist joint, but look at that, a completely unhindered joint. So that's not too bad. The hips will kick forwards that far, as well as back to that far and out to the sides. We do get a far rotation and strangely enough two clicks at the knee so it will click back there and then back a second time so that's kind of annoying in terms of the poses you want to get out of this guy and if you were thinking he was going to have ankle articulation absolutely not they are fixed into place which does suck especially considering he seems to be so agile in the move here. I mean we've seen him even go up against Scourge so yeah that's a bit of a shame but as I said I do just think there's going to be pros and cons to both versions of this character and maybe we're not going to see a really good version of him until perhaps the next movie or if they decide to approach this design in maybe three to four years. Now, in terms of accessories, if you've checked out that Stranger Danger clip where he's trying to take on Cheetor, he does have a built-in arm cannon, much like we've seen from Optimus Prime pretty decently sculpted. You know, it doesn't look too bad, but much like the body, would have really benefited from a nice metallic silver spray. And the way it incorporates into the figure is sick. So it does quite literally look like it's transformed out of his arm, which is awesome. And there's even some nice detail on the inside. Now, I love to use the blast effect, which I think came with the Siege Rung. I could be incorrect, but if you smack that in there, it really does remind me of kind of the holographic effect that we see in the trailer when he's making multiples of himself in either vehicle and robot mode. So... 
yeah, I do really like that it is Blast Effect compatible. Now, as we get stuck into a few comparisons, the first one, which I just had to bring out for some of you Bayverse fans, would be alongside Dino slash Mirage. This was kind of the last time we saw this character in live action. For some strange reason, he was credited as Mirage in Dark of the Moon, which to this day has always confused me. But as you guys can see, worlds apart in terms of design and undoubtedly personality. Here's the studio series Rise of the Beasts, Bumblebee, and Bumblebee better watch his back because it looks like Mirage is out for his head in the sense that he definitely wants to be the new first of the live action movie universe. Here's the studio series Air Razor, which we still don't know if we're going to get a look of her in bot mode in the film. Unfortunately, she's the only maximal which up until this point we've seen no images of whatsoever other than in her beast mode. So yeah, it's going to be interesting if she does just stay in beast mode throughout the whole movie. But as you guys can see, this is a studio series. This is a movie line. So there is quite a difference in terms of the size. Here he is alongside the movie line Nightbird, and I brought this comparison out because I think these two combined have the sickest vehicle modes to come out of Rise of the Beasts. I mean, Nightbird is like a Nissan GTR, and Mirage is a Porsche. I'm so hoping that we can kind of get a car chase sequence going on between these two because that would just be insane and an absolute travesty if it doesn't happen. Here is alongside the Rise of the Beast, Wheeljack, the movie line Bumblebee, and don't you guys worry, yes, this still does stand as being the worst movie line figure which I've reviewed so far. So Mirage is definitely nowhere near as bad as Bumblebee. Here he is alongside the core class Rise of the Beasts RC. And for a few quick fire ones, here he is alongside Optimus Primal, Rhinox, Movie Line Air Razor, Cheetor, Voyager class Optimus Prime, and finally the studio series Rise of the Beasts Scourge. So I believe that just about wraps up everything for Mirage in terms of his robot mode. Let's get down to transformation, which unfortunately, much like the robot mode, also does have quite a few flaws. So to kickstart things off with, you are going to want to take the fists on both sides and just hinge these sections inside the forearms, just like that. We can then rotate at the bicep, just like this. And then these arm pieces are going to rotate down and that tab will slide into that slot. So just click that in there. Come around here to this side and do the exact same. Once you've done that, we can now take the shoulders, hinge these sections up, and you're also going to want to make sure that that head is smack bang and center. Not off to the side, otherwise you may have a few issues in terms of getting these arms pegged in in just a second. Then we're going to come around to this big old backpack, and now is where you're really going to see it kind of expand into this monster. So take these little panels and just unhook them and then bring them over the top of this section. So do the same here for this side, unpeg them, and then just kind of bring them over the top, take what will become the bonnet, flip this section down, and then flip out the bumper. So there is a lot which is packed away in this, and check that out, that is complete transparent plastic, which is kind of cringeworthy, especially in the way it transforms in just a second, but then detach the backpack away from the body, and just hinge all of this out. Now what we can do is take these shoulders, and just compress them within the chest. As I said previously, the main chest itself doesn't transform at all, which I do think is kind of a waste because I'm almost certain they could have made use of a lot of this to thicken out that chest. But anyway, then we're going to rotate at the waist so the front is now facing the back. You'll then want to take the heel spurs and just detach those on both sides and then take these sections here and just flip these all the way around. Do the exact same here for this side, so flip that section there all the way around and now is where things can become a little tricky so first up you're going to want to take the foot click it backwards once and then take the shin and flip this piece all the way forwards and once you reach a certain point you're then going to click the foot all the way backwards now as you guys can see there is a little transparent tab that will just slide into this slot so do the exact same here for this side so click that foot back one and then bring that shin all the way up and just snap it down into place and then snap that piece in. We can now take the tail lights and these pieces will peg into the back just like this and then you'll combine. So just snap that in there. Make sure the bumpers are nice and tabbed in. And now comes arguably the worst step of the transformation. And this really does remind me of the Studio Series 86 Jazz in the way it transforms. So we get these massive transparent tabs, which yes, do slide into these pegs. Now, there is a lot of compression that goes on here. And to tell the truth, I don't know how long this transparent plastic is going to hold up over time. But basically, shift this hinge joint here all the way to the back. Try and line these up. So snap 
them into place. And then what you've got to do is make sure that these shoulders are tucked under these pieces on both sides and then we can just kind of compress it down and it will click in again. So yeah, not the biggest fan of this and it's even tougher to transform when we're doing reverse conversion. Then you're gonna to wanna to take the headlights and just split them out to the sides to allow for enough clearance to pull that bumper in, snap that into place, kind of bring this forwards a little bit to allow enough clearance for that tab to slide in, then launch that back and do the exact same on the opposite side. And bang, here we have Mirage, fully transformed into, I think, a Porsche. I mean, I don't believe this is officially licensed, but much like Nightbird, it does look to be incredibly close to the vehicle that we'll see in the movie. And I guess if you didn't like this unlicensed look, you could go ahead and pick up the Studio Series version. But to tell the truth, guys, I do think they did a pretty decent job. So as you guys can see, some pretty nice sculpt work here for the front. I do believe it's just the shape of the headlights, which make this quite not a Porsche, because they do have some very distinguishable circular lights, whereas this one here is slightly more rectangular in terms of design but I love how that transparent blue plastic does look for the windscreen it's just a shame that the entire roof is made out of that clear plastic but as you can tell there really isn't much difference between the plastic and the painted plastic so yeah that doesn't look too bad I like the stripes the metallic blue pieces we have here for the sides and in particular would be the back I mean they've even painted the tail lights which is pretty cool and this is what he looks like from the underside now personally I have no idea whatsoever why the tires are gray I definitely think they should be black so yeah that's slightly strange especially considering they painted the insides the rims in black so yeah that's definitely not too good but in terms of weapon storage there are a few ports here on the back that you do just take the cannon to smack them in this doesn't look great at all I'm almost certain they could have found a way to have stuffed that up inside that hollow cavity but that is pretty much mirage in terms of vehicle mode and i do think this is an alt mode which we're going to be seeing quite a lot of in the movie because not only is it a porsche and the advertisement for porsche seems to be crazy but we see him kind of make duplicates of himself which is just going to be nuts in terms of a car chase sequence and like i said beforehand would love to see this go up against nightbird in her nissan gtr now, as we jump into a few vehicle mode comparisons, here we have Mirage alongside the Studio Series Rise of the Beast Bumblebee. Here we have the movie line version of Bumblebee, and it's kind of a shame to see this guy have pinned on wheels, but not Mirage, considering that undoubtedly he will be the fastest Autobot in the movie. But yeah, you know, the size between this release and the Studio Series version is very similar, so if you want Mirage for your Studio Series collection, then I don't think he's going to size up too bad. Here he is next to that movie line Nightbird, and considering both of these appear to be unlicensed, I do think the design team did a pretty good job in getting them as close as possible to how they will look in the movie. So, yeah, I quite like the way these two look. As I said beforehand, would be so sick to see these kind of in a car chase sequence alongside each other. If it doesn't happen, it's going to be a missed opportunity, but judging by the most recent trailer, it is looking like maybe Nightbird will be in pursuit of Mirage. So, yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting. Here we have Rise of the Beasts, Wheeljack, undoubtedly the most controversial Autobot, but undoubtedly will be the best. Honestly, guys, just wait till you see the movie. I'm definitely thinking this is going to be a standout character as well, but yeah, I don't think these size up too badly. Here he is alongside the core class Rise of the Beasts RC, and I'm hoping we get a Wave 3 for Movie Line, because it would be awesome to see maybe them approach a deluxe class version of RC, a Voyager class version of Scourge. I'd love to get a Voyager Scourge. That would be insane, because the leader class was pretty impressive, but yeah, do you know, I just think it'd be really cool, but I don't think these size up too terribly. Here he is alongside Movie Line Optimus Prime, and yeah, it doesn't look like the skill between these two work out that great, but Optimus does just appear to be probably a little too small alongside the vast majority of some of these deluxes. So I believe that just about wraps up everything for vehicle mode. Not bad, all things considered. To be fair, it's actually quite a strong alt mode, but now we get stuck into reverse transformation, which if you're not careful, is definitely where I can see a few breakages occurring. So to kickstart things off with, I like to take this panel and just gently hinge it forwards to allow for enough clearance for that little tab to pass over the top. Come around here to this side and do the exact same. So just slide that up. You'll then want to take the headlights, split them as far as they'll go so we can slide the bumper up just so those little tabs miss the headlights because you don't want to scratch off any of that blue paint like I think I've done here on this piece. So yeah, just watch out for that. Now comes the worst part about the transformation, popping the hood off the main bulk of the vehicle. So what I like to do is grab a hold of the shoulders and then take the side view mirrors and just gently wiggle this up and hopefully those back tabs will detach and then we can take this whole piece and shift it forwards. Trust me, it's so cringeworthy to do it and I'm not too sure how long those tabs are gonna hold up, but then you're gonna wanna take the waist and flip it around so the back is now facing the front. We can then take this section, split this like that 
and then take the tail lights, just hinge these sections inwards and do the exact same here for this side. And then you'll want to take the spoiler and separate it away from the fender. Now, much like the backpack, this is transparent plastic and the tabs are held in so securely. So just take your time when you're doing it, just give it a little wriggle and hopefully it will detach with no problems. Come here to this side and do the same. So just give it a little wriggle and eventually it should just detach there like that. Next up, I then like to take the shin and the foot and fully extend this here all the way out. Now this is pretty clever because this whole piece is gonna fold in and basically that tab there is gonna slide into that slot. So bring this here all the way around to the side, snap that there into place and there is a little tab there that's gonna peg into a hollow slot on the inside of this. So just snap that in there, come around to this side and do the exact same, so straighten all of this out. We can then flip this panel here inwards, snap that in, and then take that heel spur and lock it into place. Next up, you're gonna basically wanna take the backpack, I think, first of all. So what we're gonna do here is fold in the front bumper and then fold in the hood of the vehicle, just like this, and then take these panels, bring them inwards a little bit so this can further compress, and then these little tabs will just lock themselves into those slots. Then you're gonna wanna take the shoulders, hinge these sections out and around and do the same here for this side. Separate these shoulder pieces away from the forearm and then fold out the hands, rotate here at the bicep and do the exact same for this side. Hopefully without this popping off, which it always does, super annoying and I'm just gonna leave it off for now. Then rotate the hand out and then here for the backpack, it actually locks in at two points. So this is gonna hook into that slot and then that little tab is gonna smack itself into that slot. So just give that there a good old squeeze, smack this panel on if any of them have popped off, and bang, there we have Mirage, fully transformed into his robot mode. And wrapping up on this review for the Rise of the Beast Deluxe Class Mirage. To tell the truth, guys, I find this figure to be kind of average. I mean, in terms of the robot mode, it's definitely nothing special. Does it look better than some of the CG renders we've seen for the Studio Series release? In some ways, yes, but it does seem like it's going to have an inaccurate head sculpt. The backpack is massive, and articulation in terms of kind of the knees downwards are very lacking. I mean, it really does feel like a pre-2010 Deluxe because it has no ankle articulation. I hate that the knees are kind of indented. It just completely restricts the range of motion that you can get out of those but sculpt work is definitely where I think this guy shines it's just a shame that for the most part he's unpainted grey plastic and then when you get stuck into the transformation there is a very cringeworthy step which does involve that backpack being made out of complete clear plastic but the vehicle mode all round does seem solid despite it not being officially licensed I don't have many issues with it at all but then when you go back to robot mode again that whole transformation step is really bad so personally I'd recommend to wait until the studio series version comes out to really determine as to which is the best version of this mold because to throw you guys back to the beginning of this review I do just think this design is one that we're not going to see a good representation of until maybe the next movie or three to four years because it's probably the most Bayformery design out of all of the Autobots I mean the vehicle mode is incredibly clean there's next to no vehicle mode pieces on him so yeah I do just think it's probably quite a challenging design to replicate in an action figure but I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below what do you guys think of this movie line Mirage and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.